Hey, welcome back to IndyK 2015. I'm here with Sean with Oxenfree. Uh, this is sort of adventure, forest. Uh, what, tell us about it. Yeah, so uh, thanks for having us. Um, well, thanks thinking, for being here. Yes, we love being here in the 100 degree heat, showing Woo! the game to fans, so it's a lot of fun. <laughs> uh, no, so the game is sort of a hybrid of, if you were to take like the teen sort of adventure films or TV shows like um, Freaks and Geeks or Goonies or Stand By Me, and then set that against like a supernatural, uh, ghostly type of a story. And so when I say supernatural, I don't mean like violent horror, like heads rolling down stairs sure, and like blood, blood everywhere. Just yeah, spurting out everywhere. Of More course. like um, like Poltergeist, where when they, you know, when that family starts to interact with the ghosts in that movie, the first half of it is almost playful, and there's a bit of a sense of wonder, and it's interesting before the shit hits the fan, right? So like. Uh, it's kind of a, it's a mix of those two things. Well, yeah, I mean, it seems like it's like a there's there's definitely drama. There's definitely interaction within the characters themselves. Actually, let's let's just sure, jump into it. Let's talk about the story. Like, how set us up? Where are we are? Where are we looking at? What's going on? Who are our who are our characters? So, um, so the player plays is a girl named Alex. Um, Alex is 16 years old. She's going into her senior year of high school. Uh, she semi recently lost her brother. Her mm -hmm. brother passed away from an accident that she somewhat blames herself for and that she is somewhat responsible oh, for. No. It's a little messed up, spoiler alert. Uh, but the, uh, this group of friends every year, it's actually not a group of friends, but it's the seniors um, at this high school in this fictitious uh, Pacific Northwest school. Um, they go and they take this ferry out to a decommissioned military island that used to be a thing in the 40s that was a, ra Who <laughs> a radar station, right? We all Who does been it? there, done Decommissioned that. island uh, day, yes. So, but that island then has now been converted to like this tourist trap kind of a thing where you go out there and you get a little, you know, submarine statue and you pay your respects and you jump on and you go back. And mm -hmm. so. The kids, what they do is they pay off the ferry driver and then they crash there that night and they just party down at the beach and it's kind of a rite of passage thing for, um, for all the seniors at this high school. And so what happens is, so Alex is going and meeting her new stepbrother, Jonas, because her mother is remarrying. And so she's meeting this new person who, there's a good degree of awkwardness This there, is a obviously. lot of drama already. <laughs> oh yeah, it's, You're uh, just the setup is kind of crazy, right? So, so you go out there with your, um, your best friend, this kid, Ren, and Ren is like, He's kind of the guy, he's like, he's extremely brilliant, but he's also a total F up. Like he's always like getting into a lot of trouble. He might be on a couple of drugs, like he, but he's great at everything. Right. He, we all know that guy. And then, um, and then you're going to meet a couple of other friends out there on this island. And so really the setup in the beginning is you go, you, you sneak through a fence, you hang out on this island with some friends and you develop so, you know, relationships with each of these characters. There's a little bit of history with some, but right. um, a lot of personal stuff. And so, you know, mechanically the way you interact with that is it's like an adventure game that has no cutscenes. So you're always able to walk and talk freely. You can walk away from them if you want. You can uh, get into an argument with somebody and just leave or follow them off into the woods. Like there's a lot of sort of freedom in terms of how the conversation system works. Uh -huh. um, but then once you get down to the beach, you sort of wander your way back into a cave. And one of the things on this island that these kids have been doing for years is if you bring an old radio, you can just hear really weird stuff in the caves. And sure. everybody's thought, eh, it's because it's the decommissioned military island. Of course, and there's why not? old radio waves and stuff, it's, right? It's radio music. It's yeah, the decommissioned it's just a bunch submarine of, music. It's just got to be too. totally you know, normal stuff. Of course. And so, um, as you would expect, they wander back into the cave and unwittingly open a gate to what might be hell or what might be also another plane of reality. Also something you do in your senior year. That's what happens, it's yeah. It's senior skip day, uh, decommissioned army base day, uh, open gate to hell open day. Open gate to hell day, yes. Uh, I think open gate to hell day is you take whatever the year you're gonna graduate and like move back for a couple of days for that. That's exactly right. Ours yeah. was like around April, so it was great. Um, yeah, so at that moment then, you, the game turns from sort of like this relationship-based, fun, teen, coming-of-age story to, mm -hmm. holy crap, my friends are possessed and blasted out across this island and I need to figure out what I did, what is the backstory of what happened here, and get off the island alive. That is a lot already, like in the very beginning. <laughs> like, I can't believe that you've gone through all this stuff. Like, it's like, oh, this is just the beginning. This is, uh, teens possess, open gate to hell. This is just like first five minutes, guys. You're not missing out on anything. Uh, just to go back a little bit, uh, the, the look of the game is, is spectacular. Like, it has Thank like you. a very distinct sort of like 2D, it has a very cool art to it. Can you sort of describe like your, the, the art as well as sort of where 
where the inspiration came from. Sure. Um, yes. Yeah, so the art style, one of the, I mean, I think it's a bit of, um, it's creative choices and it's also just efficiency. We're a small team. So we wanted to come up with a look that felt really big and maybe like more like, you know, 20, 30, 40 people made this game instead of five or six people. And so the way that we, you know, looked at how can we do a game where you have a lot of characters that you're interacting with frequently without cutting away from them? And how can you have a game where only one or two people can do the majority of the art? And we started to lean into like, well, why don't we make these characters, or why don't we make the environment become a big character, right? Like, right. why don't we make these these massive environments and the really pulled back camera let two or three or four or five characters be walking around on it, interacting. And so that coupled with then us wanting to do this dialogue system that is very like dynamic and pops up over their head instead of being a menu that's down at the bottom of the screen, led us into generally saying like, we want a camera that's that far back, we want these dialogue bubbles, let's develop the art direction from there. Right. So it really started more from like the core of what the story and the experience was gonna be. Um, our lead artist, her name is Heather Gross. She's actually too tense over right now, okay. sweating her head off. I'm sure. Um, she is somebody that I had worked with over at Disney before. She's exceptional. She's got sort of that painterly, um, like, uh, feature animation approach, but she's also got a really dark side to her <laughs> that oh, nice. I think you're seeing come through. Oh, you, you know, like, know completely. Yeah, like, like the character designs in the world, we want to be really appealing, but off-putting and, and weird, too. Right. Um, you you mentioned the the dialogue system, and I think that the, the fact that you have this sort of like teen drama that's wrapped up within the mystery is is astounding and really is a it's a very interesting that we start off with all this happening. Can yeah. you sort of like talk about like why why did you put all this effort and energy into like the the, the dialogue system? Mm -hmm. for that's a great question. Um, we. One of the things that we really wanted to do early on in the game was create sort of a world that felt familiar and relatable and make people really get absorbed into that for a while before the shit hits the fan. You right. know, like really have a thing where you have these characters that you want to spend time with that you can relate to and that not, they're not necessarily all your buddies. Like it's not like it's the Scooby gang. You've got people who have sort of beef with you from the past and other people that are new that you're meeting. and so. The more we thought about that and building a game around those types of relationships, kind of a light bulb moment for us was, well, most choice-based games, they end up being like, who's going to get the bullet in the head right now? Right. Or who's going to, you know, these really intense mortal moments. But we were like, well, what about all the weird, awkward stuff that happens to you when you're growing up? The moment that somebody you're trying to impress offers you a cigarette, do you smoke it or not? Or right. the moment that you uh, are trying to maybe be cool in front of somebody that is somebody that's been your friend for 15 years and you might hurt their feelings a bit. And so there's a lot of that that kind of happens early on in the game. That's why we reference Freaks and Geeks and Stand By Me because we want it to feel really naturalistic. And so fundamentally that is the game. Like it's a game about like you walk and you talk and yeah, you open gates to hell and deal with ghosts. Yeah, yeah, yeah but that's, that's secondary. <laughs> but that's the primary sort of method of interaction is that dialogue system. So the thing that we knew or that we wanted to try and improve on from other narrative games was how do you make talking feel cool and like satisfying? Because it really is not something that feels cool in other games and we're trying to make it feel that way. So with the, with the, the, you know, the system, is there like, if you are cool in front of someone or uncool in front of someone, does that like change the way that they respond to you or like the, the paths in which you can actually respond back to them? Absolutely, yeah. Um, and by the way, the I, I guess I'm probably mixing cool as it comes to the player no, and then no, no. cool as it gets. Yeah, because the no, game, no, no. you should not be trying to be cool. <laughs> I, 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 I can tell you right now, I'm not going to win this game if, if it is a game. Be... Try to be cool. Uh, the game, which is actually coming out in 2016, uh, get it for your iPad best. and uh, Android. <laughs> and Jaguar. It's uh, launching Jaguar. on Jaguar. It's going to be out. Yeah. yeah, the 3DO. Uh, it's 3DO. Gonna be, it's gonna only the Panasonic. I 3DO. am not going to win that game. I actually fail on the first level every single time. Uh, as soon um, as I put it in, actually fills me. Anyway, continuing uh, but on. But yes, yes. So, I mean, the goal of the game is really, like, the go our intent in making the game was to have the player really be able to feel like their version of Alex is truly who they would want to be. So you can really, like, it's a lot of gray area. We never have, like, right or wrong answers right. to anything. It's more like, 
what is the appropriate thing for you as a player to play at that moment. And so we kind of go to great lengths to try and make all of those interactions feel as natural as possible. Even making like, like you can choose to not say anything at any given moment through the entire game. We're even going to give an achievement for that. Oh, wow. So you're <laughs> going to be like, like a, a silent protagonist. It's like the strong achievement. silent type achievement. Oh, I love this. Um, but, but we have recorded lines for every single conversation for people to acknowledge you as being like weird. Like, uh, okay, I guess you don't want to talk about this anymore. And so that's a choice. You can be sort of aggressive. You can be really sweet. And mm -hmm. like, yeah, the game, I mean, it, for a game that's about six hours long, it's an 1,100 page script. Oh, wow. So it's obscenely huge. Like, yeah, it's crazy. Uh, it keeps getting longer. Adam, who wrote it, is also next door sweltering. <laughs> um, but it's uh, currently writing more pages. Currently writing more pages. What are you doing just standing around? Yeah. Uh, yeah, so so there is a lot of, um, uh, of of branches. By the end of the game, we uh, you know I, I, I we're very proud of the fact that by the end of the game, there are many many different endings that will have come from your choices as the player. Uh, so just uh, you know, obviously this game is still still in development. Yes, it's still still going. We're close. Very close. Yes. Very close. Into what is like one of the things that you're most excited about for this game? Um, I think the most except wow, there's a lot. Uh, uh, but but the, just like, pick one that you haven't <laughs> one that you haven't touched upon yet. Okay, uh, okay, that's it. Yeah. So one of the things we have not touched on like at all yet is the fact that the events on the island are based on true stories. Wait a minute, they're based yeah. on. True <laughs> st Wait a minute, did you actually I open a you not. <laughs> portal to hell? Uh, that it's was on you? Wikipedia, man. It's, it's a Wiki real thing. Well, if it's on Wikipedia, then it has no. To be the true. Uh, the history of the island as this sort of um, this this World War II outpost and some events that took place back then ha are things that have heavily inspired the events that take place in the game. So, one of the things that inspired us to even come up with the story was uh, we were just doing research into a lot of the Pacific Northwest because we're fans of the Goonies and a lot of these other things were that that were shot up there and we took a, a, a photo trip up there and there was an island that um, had like a, tons of radar outposts and I was like were we just paranoid like was America just paranoid back then but no there were there was a Japanese sub that got up on the shore that fired a rocket into a little league field in Oregon oh, wow. and, at like two in the morning that nobody talks about right and you don't really think about like whoa like that war got super close that's pretty intense and right. so we thought wouldn't it be cool to set this um, like to to have some of that go wrong and you know spin that out into a different sort of story of some things that happened that went really bad during World War II and have the kids have to deal with that now. So that's not getting too spoilery and we're gonna announce more of that soon, but definitely there's a lot of real things happening on the island. That sounds absolutely amazing. I cannot wait to play this game. Awesome. Uh, we're looking Thank at you. it maybe next January. January. It's right around the corner. That's why oh when you God. said, is it close? What are you yeah. doing here? We're like got five weeks out. Off. That's exactly right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you're killing me. Well, January. So Xbox One and Steam and uh, and Windows 10. For that, is, that is absolutely fantastic. Well, uh, make sure everyone checks out Oxenfree when it does come out in January. Thank you very much for taking your time Thank and you talking so much. about the game.